So now if you feel like you have a good grip on the function adding, subtracting, multiplying, dividing, and the function composition, all we're doing here is just looking at some more examples. So if you feel good about it, you're good to go, uh, then you can head out. But now we're just going to be looking at table examples, graph examples, and a mixed example. So let's look at the table example here. We're asked to look at all these different operations here. So f plus g of 0, this is f of 0 plus g of 0. And when we look at each of these, we're looking at 0 on the table. So we have 0 here on the f table. And the output is negative 4, so f of 0 is negative 4. And then on the g table, 0 has an output of negative 1, so this is plus negative 1. And so we have negative 5. And then now we have multiplication, f times g of 2, f of 2 times g of 2. And this is, we look at the outputs now in the tables of where 2 is. So f of 2 is 6 looking at the table times g of 2 is 11 looking at the table and this gives us 66. Next we're doing subtraction and the input is negative 3 so this is g of negative 3 minus f of negative 3 and looking at the table g of negative 3 is 2 minus f of negative 3 looking at the table negative 3 up here is 5 so we're doing 2 minus 5, which is negative 3. And then now division, g divided by f of 7. So we're doing g of 7 divided by f of 7. And looking at what those outputs are for 7, we have in the numerator g of 7. Well, when we're looking for g of 7, the g table does not have a 7 in it. For the x value so because the g table does not have 7 as an x value we cannot guess or try to make an equation for what this function is this function we're just assuming is all that we're given it's only this list of points so there's no 7 as an input for g therefore 7 is not in the domain so this does not exist and then these last two are function compositions so we're doing f of g of negative 1 so we first work from the inside, g of negative 1. Looking at the g table, negative 1 as the x, that gives an output of 4. So we're looking at f of 4. Looking at the f table, 4 as the input gives us the output of 2. So this is 2. And then next we have g of f of negative 3. So we're doing g of f of negative 3. And we work on the inside first, so figure out what f of negative 3 is. f of negative 3, looking at the f table, we have negative 3 as the input, 5 as the output. So now we're looking at g of 5. 5 is the input for the g table, 2 is the output. So this is 2 as well. Now here we're going to be evaluating them looking at two functions represented as graphs. So for these graphs, we first want to do f plus g of negative 2. So this is f of negative 2 plus g of negative 2. Look at the f function and look at the x of negative 2. If we go over left, 1, 2, the x right there for negative 2. And then look at the f function, which is the solid line. That's counting up by 2. So we have this is positive 2. And then for the g function, count down. That's, well, negative 2. So we're adding negative 2 to that, and we get... 2 plus negative 2 is 0. And now we're doing g times f of 4. So write this as g of 4 times f of 4. So 4 is the input and the operation that we're doing to the outputs. It's multiplication. So look at where 4 is. Count to the right. 1, 2, 3, 4. And then the output of the f function, if we count down, see where that height is. 1, 2, 3, 4. That's negative 4 for the f function and then count up for the g function that's positive 2 so we're doing 2 times negative 4 and 2 times negative 4 is negative 8 and then now we're doing subtraction where the input is 1 so f of 1 minus g of 1 look at where 1 is for x and that's right here so then look at the outputs. G has an output of 0. F has an output of negative 1. So this is negative 1 minus 0. Or we would simplify it as negative 1. And then we have F divided by G of 5. We can write that as F of 5 divided by G 
g of 5. And looking at the table, look at where x is 5. We count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And then see what the outputs or the heights are of these different graphs. So for f, we count down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Negative 5 is the output for f. And then for g, the output is count up 1, 2, 3. So we have 5 over 3. And now you can maybe say that this is a little bit offset from 3. Um, at the end of the day, it's not too big of a deal how it is. This is a little bit blurred of a graph. Um, so we're, we're just looking more at how to read these different notations and operations. So negative 5 over 3, call that good. We could simplify or reduce that, but we'll just leave it as is. And then next we have f of g of 4. So 4 is the input, and then the outside function is f. So we have f of g of 4. So we first got to figure out what is g of 4. So look at 4 on the x values. We count 1, 2, 3, 4. And then we count up to where the g function is. That's 1, 2. So this is what we're actually looking at, f of 2. So now we have 2 is the new input, which 2 was the output of the g of 4. So 2 is the input of f now, so we count to the right 1, 2, and see what the height is of the f function. Count down 1, 2, so that is negative 2 is the output of f of 2. And then the next one, we have g of f of 2, so g of f of 2. 2 is the input, f is the inside function, g is the outside function. So we just said what f of 2 was, that's negative 2, so we can write this as g still on the outside of negative 2, and then we look at the input of negative 2, count left, 1, 2, and then see where g is, that's the dotted one, count down, 1, 2, so the output there is again negative 2. And then lastly, we have a bit of a mixed bag here where we have a, a table and we have a graph to look at. So f is the graph, g is the table. So. We're looking at all the different operations, adding f of 2 plus g of 2. Looking at f of 2 in the graph, we count to the right 2, 1, 2, and then count up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So the output of 2 on the f function is 6, plus look at the table, the input is 2, and then we get an output of 4 on the table, so this is 10 as the result. And then we have subtraction here with the input of negative 2. So this is g of negative 2 minus f of negative 2. So looking at the table, g of negative 2, input is negative 2, output is 1. So we have 1 there. And then minus f of negative 2, looking at this, count left, 1, 2 on the graph. And then we have an output of 0. So this becomes 1. And then we have division here with the input of 2, f of 2 over g of 2. We already said and found what g and f of 2 are on the first part. So let's say f of 2 in the numerator is 6, g of 2 in the denominator is 4. So we could reduce this, say 3 over 2 or 1.5, same thing. And then next we have g times f of 0. So we could write it as g of 0 times f of 0. And this is equal to look at G table and see where 0 is. 0 is at the bottom here. The output is 11. So we have 11 times F of 0. Use the input of 0 on the F function on the graph. So we have 0 is right at the center. And then count up to where we see the F function. 1, 2, 3. Multiply by 3. And that's 33. And then now we have the function compositions. This one is doing F as the outside function. G is the inside function. 6 is the input. And then we work on the inside first, so f of g of 6. g of 6, we can figure out looking at the table. 6 is the x or the input. Negative 5 is going to be the output on the table. And now that output becomes the new input of f. So we're doing f of negative 5. So we count on the graph left 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then we see what is the height of the f function, count down 1, 2, 3, 4, so we have an output of negative 4. And then lastly, we have g of f of 2, so that we can write this as g is the outside function, f is the inside function, 2 is the input, and now we first figure out what is f of 2, because that's the inside, and looking at the graph, we count to the right, 2, and then we count up, and we've already done this, this is 6, so on the inside is 6, so this is g of 6. 
and we get as an output we already looked at g of six on the last part but just looking at the table again input is six output is negative five on the table